Dinosaurs are among the most successful land animals ever to have existed. They roamed the Earth for more than 150 million years. They lived on every continent and evolved into a dazzling variety of forms. Gigantic plant eaters some larger than a house shared their world with tiny chicken-sized meat eaters and with many other dinosaur species of all shapes and sizes. Their name means terrible lizard. Dinosaurs dominated the Earth until a combination of environmental disasters caused their extinction about 65 million years ago. But one group the birds survives. Dinosaurs were reptiles, animals with a backbone and four legs and with a scaly, waterproof skin. Like most other reptiles, dinosaurs laid eggs with shells. Detailed studies of anatomy have shown that extinct dinosaurs are most closely related to the crocodiles and birds among living animals. The skeletons of birds and dinosaurs share a number of features not found in other animal groups, such as modifications to the legs that make them more efficient runners. Other shared features include lightly built limb bones, features of the skull and jaws, and a hinged ankle. On the other hand, dinosaurs differ from their crocodilian cousins, and from all other reptiles, in a number of important ways. The most significant of these differences are found in the bones of the feet, legs and hips. Most kinds of reptiles hold their legs out from the sides of the body and move their legs through wide arcs as they walk. This style of walking is called sprawling, and is not much different from how early vertebrates walked when they came out onto land. Some lizards can run on their hind legs only, but their legs still stick out to the sides. And crocodiles, in addition to sprawling, can tuck their hind limbs under the body to do a high walk on land. In contrast, Dinosaurs had legs that could only be held directly underneath the body, much like the legs of a mammal such as a dog or a horse. As a result, dinosaurs could not sprawl like other reptiles. The long, straight legs of dinosaurs could make very long strides, and footprints show that they put one foot in front of the other as they walked or ran. Dinosaurs lived millions of years ago during a period of time that is known as the Mesozoic Era. At this time, the Earth was quite different from the planet we know today. The land, sea and sky were populated with many unfamiliar animals and plants, and even the shapes of the continents were different. Although all of these things seem strange to us, this world was also home to the ancestors of many of the living things that we see around us today. The Mesozoic era is divided into three periods, the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. The Triassic period is the earliest of these divisions. It lasted from about 245 to 213 million years ago. During the Triassic period, all of the continents were joined together in a huge single landmass that scientists call Pangaea. The Earth was relatively warm and dry at this time and was covered with large deserts. The polar ice caps that now cover Antarctica and Greenland were absent during the entire Mesozoic era. Dinosaurs first evolved in this environment. Great monsoon seasons alternated with dry periods over much of the globe. Gradually, dinosaurs became more abundant while a number of other animal groups, such as the ancestors of mammals, became scarcer. Meat-eaters, such as Colophysis, and plant-eating prosauropods, such as Plotiosaurus, were two kinds of dinosaurs that lived at this time. The late Triassic period can be regarded as the beginning of the age of dinosaurs. Following the Triassic period, the Jurassic period began 213 million years ago and continued until the beginning of the Cretaceous period 144 million years ago. During this time, the world's weather became wetter, though it still remained warmer than today. The extra moisture helped plants to colonize the deserts and turn them into forests of huge trees and prairies of ferns and other low-growing plants the continents started to break apart from each other at the beginning of the Jurassic period. Great seas began to open up between North America and Europe and between Europe and Africa. These seas became today's Atlantic Ocean and Mediterranean Sea. During the Jurassic period, dinosaurs increased in number, and many more different types of dinosaurs appeared, including the gigantic long-necked sauropods, armored dinosaurs such as Stegosaurus and large meat-eaters such as Allosaurus. The final division of the Mesozoic era is the Cretaceous period. Dinosaurs reached their greatest numbers at this time, in a world that was changing rapidly. By the end of the Cretaceous period, the continents were beginning to reach the positions they occupy today although India was a large island isolated from all other land. Australia, Antarctica and South America were still joined to each other by narrow land bridges. The world's temperature peaked at the start of the Cretaceous period but cooled as time went on. This was the time of the great predator Tyrannosaurus rex, the three-horned Triceratops and the duck-billed Hadrosaurs. But at the end of the Cretaceous period, 65 million years ago, all of these amazing animals disappeared, along with many other types of animals and plants. The reasons for this are still being debated by scientists, but the close of the Cretaceous period marks the end of the age of dinosaurs. No dinosaurs, except the birds, 
survived into the following Cenozoic era, which is often called the Age of Mammal. Dinosaurs shared their world with many other creatures, that are now extinct. While dinosaurs roamed the land, enormous marine reptiles ruled the oceans. Flying reptiles swooped through the skies, catching insects and fish and occasionally tackling even larger prey. Alongside these animals, the small, early relatives of mammals and birds tried to make a living, while avoiding becoming a small meal for some larger animals. Many of the animal groups alive today originated during the Mesozoic era. Mammals like the shrew-size Morganocodon appeared during the late Triassic period. But for most of the Mesozoic era, mammals were small, secretive animals about the size of rats or rabbits. They became the dominant animals only after the dinosaurs had disappeared. Frogs and crocodiles also evolved during the Triassic period, as did the turtles and tortoises. Lizards are first known in the Jurassic period, and the first bird, Archaeopteryx, flew through late Jurassic skies. Snakes slithered into existence during the Cretaceous period. Flying reptiles, or pterosaurs, appeared in the late part of the Triassic period and survived until the end of the Cretaceous period. Pterosaurs came in a variety of sizes. Many were about the size of pigeons and crows, but others were as large as eagles and albatrosses. The largest flying animal ever was a pterosaur. Quetzalcoatlus, from the late Cretaceous period of North America, had a wingspan of about 36 feet, 11 meters larger than a small airplane. Pterosaur wings were each made from one very long finger that supported a thin, but very strong, flap of skin. This flap of skin is attached to the side of the body. Many pterosaurs lived around rivers, lakes and shallow seas. Most pterosaurs ate insects, fish and other small animals. Spectacular marine reptiles, including the ichthyosaurs, plesiosaurs, pleosaurs and mosasaurs, inhabited the Mesozoic seas. Of these animals, the ichthyosaurs were the most highly adapted to life in the sea. They looked extremely similar to dolphins, with long, pointed snouts full of sharp teeth, fins for steering, and a powerful crescent-shaped tail. Ichthyosaurs could not leave the sea to lay eggs, so they gave birth to live young while still in the water. Plesiosaurs had long, snake-like necks, short, squat bodies, and small heads equipped with sharp, pointed teeth. Their legs were modified into large paddles that they beat up and down to fly through the water. Pleosaurs were a group of plesiosaurs that had shorter necks and much larger heads. One type of pleosaur, Leopleurodon, had one of the largest meat-eating skulls ever to have existed. The head of this creature was over 6 feet 6 inches, 2 meters, long. Mosasaurs were gigantic lizards closely related to living monitor lizards. They lived during the late Cretaceous period. All of these marine reptiles lived on a diet of fish, squid and shellfish. The largest pleosaurs often ate other marine reptiles. With the exception of turtles, all marine reptiles became extinct at the end of the Cretaceous period. Dinosaur eggs and nests were first recognized from discoveries by the American Museum of Natural History in Mongolia's desert, the Gobi, led by Roy Chapman Andrews in the 1920s. They provided scientists with their first ideas about how dinosaurs might have raised and cared for their young. A number of recent discoveries in the western United States and in Mongolia, including embryos and baby dinosaurs, have greatly improved our knowledge of dinosaur birth. Careful study of these precious fossils has shown that dinosaur nesting behavior was very similar to that of living birds. Dinosaur eggs come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes. Some eggs are circular and about the size of a tennis ball, whereas others are up to 21 inches, 53 centimeters, in length and have an elliptical shape. This might seem very big, but even these eggs are not as large as those laid by the biggest birds, such as the extinct elephant birds of Madagascar. Current evidence suggests that all dinosaurs laid eggs and that the eggs were laid in nests. The total number of eggs laid in a single nest was about 22 for the small theropods Oviraptor and Troodon, and up to 25 for the duck-billed Myasaura. Troodon appears to have laid its eggs in pairs, probably over a period of several hours, until the complete clutch had been deposited in the nest. In contrast, Myasaura seems to have laid its eggs in a spiral pattern, starting at one side of the nest and working around it until all of the eggs were in place. Most of our information on Myasaura nests comes from a spectacular locality in Montana called Egg Mountain. This area contains evidence of many dozens of nests. Analysis of the rock types on Egg Mountain shows that this area was an island in a shallow lake during the late Cretaceous period. It appears that herds of Myasaura used this island as a communal nest site. The nests are situated very close to each other, but are separated by just enough space for an adult Myasaura to move around in without trampling on its eggs. These nesting colonies must have been very noisy, smelly and crowded places, much like penguin colonies of modern times. However, by living together so closely, the Myasaur herd were able to protect their young much more easily. The shallow waters that surrounded the island might also have offered some protection from predators. In a handful of cases, scientists have been lucky enough in eggs. So far, embryos are known for the theropods Troodon, Oviraptor, and Therizinosaurus, the ornithopod Myasaura and an unnamed sauropod from South America. A number of skeletons from very young baby dinosaurs have also been discovered. These fossils provide important information on the ways in which dinosaurs grew and developed, and also tell us something about the ways that parents cared for their young.
Examination of the tiny bones from Myasaura babies has shown that the leg bones were not fully formed at the time when the animals hatched. It appears that the legs were quite weak and that the young hatchlings were incapable of running or walking properly. As a result, the babies were probably confined to the nest during the first few weeks of their lives. This idea is confirmed by the presence of many fragments of trampled, broken eggshell in the nest. If the babies had left the nest soon after hatching, the eggshells would not have been broken up in this way. While the babies were restricted to their nests, their parents would supply them with food, water and protection. Newly hatched Myasaura were about 12 inches, 30 centimeters, in length. But they grew very quickly, and reached a length of about 5 feet, 1.5 meters, in only a few weeks. At this point, the babies were big enough and strong enough to leave the nest and join the rest of the herd. In contrast to the high levels of parental care seen in Myasaura, Troodon babies were left to fend for themselves as soon as they had hatched. Troodon nests often contain the remains of hatched eggs. These eggs lack the top part of the shell, which was removed by the baby as it hatched out, but otherwise show little evidence of trampling. This suggests that the babies did not remain in the nest for long after hatching. The limb bones of Troodon babies were well formed and strong, so the youngsters could scamper away from the nest and begin searching for their own food almost immediately. These tiny predators probably ate insects and other small animals but were themselves vulnerable to attack by larger meat-eating animals such as other theropods and large monitor lizards. Skeletons of the small plant-eating dinosaur Protoceratops are extremely abundant in Mongolia, in the Gobi. For this reason, when dinosaur eggs and nests were discovered in this area during the 1920s it was assumed that they must have belonged to this animal. During the same series of expeditions, the skeleton of a bizarre theropod was found close to one of these nests, and it was suggested that this animal had died while attempting to steal eggs from the nest. It was given the name Oviraptor, egg thief, as a result. Recent fieldwork in the Gobi has led to the discovery of many more dinosaur nests, some of which are preserved underneath the fossilized skeleton of an Oviraptor. The Oviraptor skeletons appeared to be sitting on top of the eggs, and it was suggested that the nests might belong to Oviraptor rather than to Protoceratops. This idea was proved to be true when an egg containing an Oviraptor embryo was discovered in one of the nests. It seems that Oviraptor was actually a caring parent that brooded its eggs just like a bird, rather than the devious egg thief that it was once thought to be. This is a good example of how new discoveries can overturn long-held views on dinosaur biology and evolution. Dinosaurs interacted with each other, and with the other animals that shared their environment, in an astonishing number of ways. Meat-eating dinosaurs such as Tyrannosaurus and Allosaurus needed the equipment to hunt down and subdue prey animals. They had the teeth and claws to penetrate the superb defenses of plant-eaters such as Triceratops and Iguanodon if they could catch them. Within the same species, individuals would probably have fought each other in contests for mates, food, territory or dominance within a group. To cope with all of these demands, dinosaurs possessed a wide variety of weapons for both attack and defense. The principal weapons of predatory dinosaurs, from the enormous Tyrannosaurus to the diminutive Compsognathus, were mouths lined with rows of blade-like teeth, and hands and feet tipped by razor-sharp claws. The teeth of most theropod dinosaurs were pointed and strongly curved so that they could easily pierce flesh and get a firm grip on a struggling prey animal. Tiny serrations, like those on a steak knife, lined the edges of these teeth, allowing them to slice through meat with ease. In Tyrannosaurus, the teeth were up to 12 inches, 30 centimeters, long and were strong enough to crush and puncture solid bone. Other theropods, such as Baryonyx, had teeth similar to those of living crocodiles that were ideal for impaling slippery prey such as fish. Claws All theropods possessed curved, hook-like claws on their hands and feet. Each claw ended in a sharp point that was ideally suited for digging into the flesh of unfortunate prey animals. During life, a sheath of a hard, horn-like substance called keratin the same material that makes up our hair and fingernails would have covered the bony claws. As the sheath was worn down by use, it would develop a sharp edge, making it a very efficient weapon for cutting and slashing. But the sheath was also a living tissue and could be partially replaced by new growth as it was worn away. The curved shape of the claws, similar to that seen in living birds of prey such as eagles and hawks, would have been useful in pinning prey to the ground when feeding. Some of these claws were enormous. For example, the claws on the hands of baryonyx would have been over 12 inches, 30 centimeters, long. In other cases, the claws were small, but deadly. Several small theropods, such as Deinonychus and Troodon, had specially enlarged claws on their feet that could be used like switchblade knives. A reverse joint in the second toe forced the claw to be folded back during running and walking. However, when attacking, the claw could be flicked forward at high speed. 
This action could have been performed in combination with a jump or a kick and would have caused a great deal of damage to any animal unlucky enough to be within range. Teeth of Deinonychus are sometimes found alongside skeletons of Tenonosaurus, a large plant-eating dinosaur. Careful study of the shape and size of the teeth by scientists has shown that they often belong to several different individuals. In addition, Deinonychus skeletons are often found together, indicating that these small but vicious hunters lived in groups. These two observations suggest that Deinonychus hunted in packs, using teamwork to attack and kill much larger animals than themselves. The brain of Deinonychus is very large for a dinosaur of its small body size, and this might have allowed it to coordinate its hunting behavior and strategy with other members of the pack. Many plant-eating dinosaurs possessed impressive defensive weapons that provided them with some security in a world populated by large predatory dinosaurs. These weapons ranged from thumb spikes to tail clubs, horns and heavy hoofs. Some dinosaurs were able to rely on sheer size as a defense adult sauropods were so large that they probably weren't threatened by even the largest meat eaters. Others, like the ankylosaurs and the sauropod saltosaurus, relied on coats of armor that could resist the sharp teeth and claws of all but the most determined predators. Stegosaurs possessed pairs of large spikes, up to 2 feet, 60 centimeters, long, situated at the end of a powerful tail. A sideways swipe with this formidable weapon might have severely injured a marauding theropod. Some ankylosaurs might have used massive tail clubs made out of solid bone in a similar way. A few sauropods, including the Chinese omasaurus, omay lizard, also had bony tail clubs. The thick set, heavy tails of large ornithopods, such as iguanodon and parasaurolophus, and sauropods might have provided them with some protection. A well-aimed blow from one of these tails could throw an attacker off balance or knock it off its feet. Other sauropods, such as Diplodocus and Apatosaurus, had long, whip-like tails. Powerful muscles could flick the tail from side to side, and the end of the tail could strike a predator at blistering speed. The horns of some Ceratopsian dinosaurs might have been formidable weapons. The arrangement and number of the horns varied from species to species. For example, Triceratops had a short horn on the tip of its nose and a long brow horn over each of the eyes, whereas Monoclineus, one-horned, had a single large horn on its nose. The horns would have been covered with a sharp sheath made of keratin. In Triceratops, a large bony frill over the neck would have provided some protection from predators. Knowing what an animal eats is extremely important. Diet controls almost all aspects of an animal's life, including its behavior and the place where it lives. Animals may be divided into herbivores, plant eaters, carnivores, meat eaters, and omnivores, those that eat both. Direct evidence of dinosaur eating habits is hard to come by. Scientists look for different clues. In rare cases, the remains of the dinosaur's last meal have been found inside the skeleton. We know that the theropod colophysis sometimes practice cannibalism, because scientists have discovered adult skeletons containing small bones of baby colophysis. Another small theropod, Compsognathus, has been found with the remains of a small lizard in its ribcage, close to the original position of the stomach. There is also an example of an Edmontosaurus, a duck-billed dinosaur, with stomach contents that included fragments of bark, pine needles and conifer cones. Examination of fossilized feces, animal waste, called coprolites, can also provide direct evidence of diet. Coprolites contain bits and pieces of the animals or plants that the dinosaur was eating. Unfortunately, there are only a few cases in which a coprolite has been found inside a dinosaur skeleton the direct link that would enable scientists to confidently assign a coprolite to a specific type of dinosaur. In 1991, an expedition from the American Museum of Natural History to Mongolia's desert, the Gobi, made such a find. The coprolite, discovered inside a dromaeosaurid theropod similar to Velociraptor, contained the remains of a small lizard-like animal. Many coprolites have been found that cannot be directly associated with any particular types of dinosaur. Some large coprolites from the Upper Cretaceous period of North America contain several fragments of plant material. Scientists speculate that these may have been produced by hadrosaurs, the duck-billed dinosaurs that were so abundant at that time. Other coprolites found in the same region contain fragments of bone, demonstrating that meat-eating dinosaurs made them. One recent find, an enormous coprolite over 16 inches, 40 centimeters, long and containing smashed pieces of bone, is thought to have belonged to Tyrannosaurus.